Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. And we've got not one, but two stocks that are showing signs of still being undervalued in the marketplace as the S&P 500 is in that ladder match, climbing their way to 5,300 right now, guys. Can't wait. But while you're climbing that ladder... Just keep one hit on and then just hit that subscribe button down there. And then while you're doing it, give the video a thumbs up. Keep reaching to maybe not financial freedom, but that briefcase full of cash that's sitting right there at the top of the ladder. You can do it. You can do it before inflation just kicks the ladder out from under you. And then you're just just falling exactly. down to the ring. Just that drop low blow. Guys. <laughs> Man, you guys were here. We are here. Bird and I. We're filming this here on March 24th. This video is going to be released this Thursday here, guys, um, here on the 28th. And Can't wait. S&P 500 means up over 5,200. I thought it was wild when we crossed 5,000. Um, up over 10%, guys. And, um, you know, even funny stocks, as we mentioned on my Weiss portfolio, we were looking to sell, which we haven't yet because retail decided to just blast off from – from that video. I know that was wild. The timing of it couldn't have been funnier because it's like, when do you put the sale in? But I think what the gap and Nordstrom are up 40% or something since that video went off. Yeah. Gap gap is up in this past month, 49 or this year, I don't know, 49% or something ridiculous for GPS stock. And then obviously Nordstrom with the possible, you know, taken private. So it's like, all right, well, what what is undervalued? Not, not saying that those were undervalued stocks. We're actually looking to sell those, but it's like okay, with the market, everything's just still on fire. Obviously, we know where crypto's at right now. Um, what's what is undervalued? I mean, we had our dividend stock picks of the week. Burke came out with a video on Tuesday on two stocks. It's like, man, what else do you think has good metrics that is a sound investment purchase? There's only one way to find out, Lanny. You got to run them through our stock screener, which focuses on three metrics and that bonus metric, the PE ratio, less than the S&P 500, two, payout ratio, less than 60%. Although we find that perfect payout ratio range to be between 40% and 60%. Third metric, the history of increasing dividends. We look at the five-year dividend growth rate and the number of consecutive years in which the stock has been increasing its dividend. And lastly, that bonus metric, the dividend yield. Oh, it's true. Oh, it's damn true. Kurt Angle style, guys. If you know, you know. So we're featuring two dividend aristocrats. Um, in fact, one is a dividend king. One we used to always call good old reliable. Still, one, It's still reliable in my mind. Still reliable. It's going to be interesting, though, with what happens because they split off the Ken view. Yes, we're talking about Johnson & Johnson as stock number one today. Ticker symbol is J&J. You have to talk about J&J &J, &J right now in the market. One of the three dogs of the Dow in 2023. In fact, both stocks here are going to be dogs of the Dow from 2023. Um, they're under 156 bucks. They're at 155.75, becoming really just a pure pharmaceutical bird. Is that how what you take them as now? Yeah, well, they're definitely not a consumer giant anymore because it can be used that consumer giant piece. They want to play with the big boys in the pharmaceutical sector because that's where the high growth is and that's where management perceives the value to be. They're not getting bogged down by the slow growing consumer arena anymore. They're focusing on hitting those home runs, developing those new drugs and seeing what's happening. Going for the home run still instead of getting singles and doubles, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. People forget that baseball can be won by playing small ball too. Small ball works, stealing, taking stolen bases, butting people around. It still works, guys. But J&J, 155.75, down 2.64% this year, um, you know, up 3% since this point last year. But when we look at the dividend diplomat stock metrics, that first metric, that PE, like they have been for, I feel like, forever, mm -hmm. they're at a PE below 16, a 15.88 bird. It always is the same. We've joked about that for years now. It's always between 16 and 18, Johnson and Johnson. Now it's just a hair below 16. So even with the split off, it still can't get away from its old um, its old tendencies. Let's look at that payout ratio, though, Andy. 
Their annual dividends four dollars and seventy six cents. That is a payout ratio, forty eight point five two percent. I feel like they've always been below fifty percent. Always, same thing. The company might be a little slimmer. They might have gone on a, a diet, though. Probably wouldn't have been using that Ozempic because that's not a Johnson and Johnson product. But the slimmer down Johnson and Johnson still mm -hmm. has the same metrics that it always had. Well, guys, let's look at the dividend growth. Doing it 61 plus years. Average growth rates 5.75% for J&J. &J. I mean, they should be able to keep that up with that type of payout ratio. Yeah, and their dividend yield is still above 3%. It's 3.06%, which is 24 basis of points above its five-year average dividend yield of 2.82%. Now, Bert, I know you guys over well over 200 shares, especially after you've had a bunch of quarterly drips happen on 200 shares. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'm liking them. I'd like them at like, you know, a nice cool 155 or below, but, you know, not going to hate, you know, got to like J&J &J at these prices, unless you think there's too much legal cloud hanging over them from the, um, you know, talc lawsuits and, you know, all that stuff, guys. So let us know in the comments you think of J&J. &J. But Bert, we said that there was two stocks, right? Yeah, let's get our uh, let's get our Ryobis. Let's go in the backyard, see if we can just start drilling to see if we can find some of this ourselves, right, Lanny? Isn't that how that works? I can't believe you used. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it works, guys. We're talking yeah. about a stock that Bird actually owns in Chevron, ticker symbol CVX. Yes, they were also a dog of the Dow in 2023, one of the worst performing dogs um, in the Dow industrial, guys. <clears throat> Surprisingly enough, they're also trading at just at around 155 a share at 154.66. Beautiful. Let's see how that ranks. So at the PE ratio, that or their forward earnings are 12.62. That gives them a PE ratio of 12.26, lady. Wow. Right. Wow. So pretty low PE. Oil is typically low. Um, you know, the reason why is maybe it has to do with all the, I don't know acquisition and merger battles that are going on i know they just they have the big s acquisition that they announced back in october that was 53 billion dollars guys so not a you know not a small acquisition i would say a freaking massive one so that's going to take up a lot of capital and focus from chevron um but hey you're here for the dividend payout ratio is the next metric though so let me let me get back into that six dollars 52 cents per year, um, you know, based on $1.63 per share per quarter, 51.66% dividend payout ratio. So just a smidge higher than J&J's payout ratio, but relatively safe and stable. Beautiful. Let's look at that history. Their five-year dividend growth rate is 6.25%. They've increased that dividend for 36 plus consecutive years. That's why you love them and ExxonMobil. They're both aristocrats and they both have managed to continue juicing up that dividend which is huge for the oil sector, especially in the last decade. We've seen a lot of volatility in the price per barrel. And Chevron, unlike some of the other giants, have been able to continue growing that dividend through the good times and the bad. Shell. Um, I digress, I guess. <laughs> Actually, the last dividend increase, though, was just under 8%, so higher than the five-year average. Again, doing it for 36 years. Dividend yields at 4.22%, Bird. So higher by a full percent plus than j and j definitely higher than the s p 500 but what it's not higher is their five-year average <laughs> yeah. that is absolutely right <laughs> that's absolutely right hey it is what it is but it is what it that is. run up in price but you know it's been flat pretty much uh, over the last 12 months down only 0.9 percent in the last 52 weeks yeah and if you think about it before the price ran up, there were some dark days for the oil sector. So there were some very high yielding times for there. Yeah, so. yeah that, you know, Q, Q1, Q2 of 2020, those were some dark days here. In yeah, oil. so that's a lot of that's baked into that five-year average. So this is the rare sector where it's not showing signs of undervaluation from this one metric standpoint. But let's put up all the metrics here with the PE of 12, payout of 51%, five-year dividend growth rate of 6%. History of increasing dividend at 36 and a yield of 4.22%. Despite that one metric, everything else is looking pretty solid for Chevron. I see why it's on your watch list. Yeah. I mean, it it's it's a great stock. Are you guys buying Chevron stock? You know, we're gonna we're gonna throw out both stocks here on the screen. J 
J&J is going to be high on the list right now. You know, definitely a dividend king that I don't own a ton of. Nowhere near what you own, Bert. Um, I don't know if I'll ever catch up to that. Um, but, you know, if I had to pick between the two, I, I say you go with either or. I don't think yeah. you're, you can go wrong buying either or stock right now. No, I think these are both great companies. So any person, this is where your personal investing touch comes in. Which one do you want? They're both great. Congratulations for buying one or both. Yeah, one or both. The red pill or blue pill. Guys, again, not professional advice. You guys got to do your own research, but we're just giving you our take. When you mess with Bert, you mess with me. When you mess with me, you mess with Bert. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. And if you're going to mess with us, you might as well subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Hmm. What do we need to tell all those people that are going to mess with us, Lanny? Hmm. And that's the bottom line because the dividend diplomat said so. No, no, that just didn't. That just didn't hit right. Because we're Mr. Dividend Manios here, guys. No, that's that's HBK, guys. You're either with us or you're against us, Jack. That was Bert the Hurt and Lanny from the DD. Over and